now let, let's continue with the second example we have prepared, uh, which relates to planar contour. So we have uh, selected uh, a nice surface. If we display that surface in 3D, you will see that uh, it looks like some sort of mechanical piece. It has a unique shape and some holes. The idea is to extract the shape of that piece and to perform contour analysis. And to do so, um, there's an, uh, an operator available right here called Extract Planar Contour, which uh, will be used to extract the shape, de detect first the shape of uh, available on your surface and export, extract them as uh, usable control. Um, there's a couple of, of, of elements in that operator dialog box. On the left, you have your row data. On the middle, you have the segmented suitable. And on the right, as in, at the moment, you have nothing, but you will have your profile and the contour available. Uh, the software used the watershed segmentation to um, find the shape uh, um, of your surface or of the features uh, available on your surface. Uh, if, you, if you lower those settings first, you will see that uh, the software perform you know, some detection and you have other segmentation. Every uh, small detail available on your surface might be recognized as a feature of interest and that's not what you want. By playing with those two uh, settings, height, local height, local area, you will be able to merge uh, smaller um, details uh, together. So if you simply increase the height threshold to a couple of percent like that, you see that most of the, the, the tiny details, the tiny uh, pictures have been merged. If we keep increasing 30 percent, uh, 40, now you know, we have one big piece and that's exactly what you want on that particular example. If you select that you will see on the right uh, a preview of the, the contour that will be uh, exported. Once you are happy with those settings, you click on OK. And that parametric profile, that contour will be exported and available for further analysis. And that's what you see on the workflow on the right between your raw data and the extracted contour, you have one operator, which is extract planar contour. And at any time you can recall that operator back, change the settings and continue working. So now let's focus on that part of the analysis. We press F11 for entering full screen mode. If we look at that piece, we, there's a couple of components. We have a couple of circles. And that's uh, what we want. We want to uh, measure the diameters of the circles. And we also want to measure or display the coordinate of the circle centers. So let's do that. First, we create a circle. And that element you will find right here in the left panel. Create circle. You click. And then you select the first point another point and the software will uh, create a best fitted circle that would match um, that portion of the profile. In that case, it's a close po profile. We can do that another time here. We can do that here and here. Now, every time you create elements in the control study, uh, there is something called implicit points that are created. For instance, if you create a segment, an uh, implicit point could be the middle of that segment. But when we talk about, uh, when we deal with circle, the implicit point will be the center of the circle. 
and you can display those implicit points uh, by going to the view portion of the control analysis uh, tab and you select implicit point and you see the software will display the point and if you uh, hover your mouse over the those points it shows the coordinate now that we have circle we have points we can do some measurement we can measure the diameters of the circles and to do so we go back to the right panel and that option here called measure diameter you click and you select the first circle and you have the diameter the second one the third one and the fourth one if we want to display the coordinate of those centers we have this option here called add point coordinate you click and you select the first point the second the third and the fourth we can move those oops, those labels around like that this one will be here and we can auto scale the content now um, if we if we look at those coordinates here in the x and the y axis they are uh, displayed in absolute and they are directly linked to the data or the raw data that was stored in, uh, in the initial surface but it might be worthwhile to change the coordinate system uh, to make it simpler to read for instance offset uh, between the position of that circle the, the x uh, the y position of that circle and the y position of that center circle and to do so we will be changing um, placing the origin of the axis to this point and to do so that options that feature is available here we can set x z origin to a single point we click we click here and you see now that point is uh, became zero zero and the offset or the position of the other one are much simpler to read as you are probably already aware it is possible in mountains to display pass fail test and attach those tests to all of the values that are calculated throughout the document uh, a nice feature that is available in the control analysis is the ability to display such pass fail tests directly in a control study. And let's do that. So we have um, once those three circles have radius you know, fairly uh, closed, and we will be attaching pass fail tests to these. So how to do that? You simply click here on first value and if we if we look at the uh, uh, in the tab here you have define tolerance limit simply click and you see here all of the values that are are either calculated or simply measured in the control analysis and we will be tracking those three so when you want to attach a pass fail test you simply click on the first one for instance and you check the track limit of results there's two options the first one is to set a nominal value and a tolerance or to specify a lower and upper limit. So let's do that. We can specify, for instance, uh, 620 and 630. Same thing here. 620, 630 and the last one, the same. 620 and 630 click on ok and then you see directly on the control analysis graph you have the, those pass and fail tests uh, directly displayed it is also possible to display to show the tolerance limit directly on that graph now once you are happy with your measurement, we can work on the layout of our document. So we can maybe display this a little bit bigger. 
change the position of those labels like that and we click on auto scale maybe we can erase the 3d view display simply a top 2d view um, another way to summarize the calculation performed in the document is to display what we call a table of results available in the results tab. This is a nice way to simply summarize uh, either a selected uh, number of uh, measurements performed or simply all of the measurements performed in a single study. So let's do that. We select the contour analysis here, click on OK. And now we have a nice table. On that table, we can display once again uh, the tolerance definition and the pass fail test. We can also maybe change the font size of that table, maybe 10 change its location like that Oops. okay we can oh, maybe it's we can put it a little bit above change the location of this one here we can delete the second page delete page and we can give that document a nice title control analysis and now we go from uh, building a document an analysis to writing a report such report can be exported directly as a PDF to be shared with colleagues and to do so you will find that option here give it a name report you save and that report is automatically uh, exported as a PDF. Please note that extracting planar control is also visible um, on images. For instance, uh, SM images. So control analysis is definitely a feature that you can use uh, with your scanning electron microscope. Mm -hmm.